Hello, and welcome to another episode of Low to Pro, where I teach you how to take your applications to the next level. In this video, we're going to be talking about model-driven apps, and specifically the timer control of a model-driven app. Now, you might be saying, okay, well, what is the timer control? In its current state, the timer control allows you to count the number of days or the amount of time past a certain due date that a record has been active for. However, if you need something that's truly more of a timer, something that captures when something starts, when it stops, and the time between, something like that doesn't really exist within a model-driven app. Yes, you can kind of create one within a Canvas app, but it's not exactly the same. There are limitations to adding a Canvas app into a model-driven app. One of the biggest things is if we, let's see here, go into a form. If I were to be on the summary tab, I have a timer there, and I navigate to the details tab. If that timer was active on the summary tab, it is no longer active the moment you move from summary to details. Here's a way around that. I've created a little bit of a command here. Let's do a different person. Let's do Patrick. All right, so the way this timer is going to work is we have a start timer and a stop timer command. Both of these are commands that are created with JavaScript. In this one, we won't really need XRM toolbox because I'm gonna show you how to use the modern designer to kind of get through this sort of thing. So if I start the timer and I go on to explain to you guys, how this kind of works basically captures the time in which uh, something starts, the time in which something stops, and measures the amount of milliseconds between the two times. Now we're using milliseconds so that we can get the most accuracy between the two of them. If we were to use seconds, it doesn't quite give us the same amount of accuracy. So we use the number of milliseconds to get the exact time. Now, the moment I stop this timer, I have a time entry here. It creates it automatically, it says, hey, this is the time entry, who was it entered by, the start time, the stop time, if I can grab that there, it's within a minute, but the elapsed time says 25 seconds. The elapsed time is zero minutes and 25 seconds. Now, if I were to start this timer and continue to talk to you guys as we go through this, this would keep running. Even if I were to go to a different tab, even if I leave this and come back into it, we can see that the timer has been started, but still not really a lot of time has passed. So just to prove to you that this does run, even if you're doing completely other things, we're gonna leave this timer running and I'm gonna show you guys how I did this. I have a script file in here called timer commands plus. Now you'll receive a copy of this file within the description, but you're patient like me. There you go. All of this stuff, all it says is make me a timer. There's a step in this that says start timer and timer and check for timer. Now check for timer is going to see if you have a timer already active, but here's how we build it out. I went onto the contact table. All right. And let's create a brand new command. So here we're going to use the modern command designer. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a command for the main form. Hit edit, this will pull up the modern designer. Now the modern designer has two components. You can either create commands with PowerFX or you can create commands with JavaScript. Now you might be saying, okay, this is great and all, you have a time entry table, why don't you just log the start time whenever they create the timer and then just log the end time and make, you know, Dataverse do all the math for you. That's great and all, that would be really, really helpful if you wanted a bunch of half done records lying around. This is only going to create a record in the event that they start the timer and stop it again. I have left out a bit of functionality for pausing or canceling timers or anything like that. However, still you can start and stop a timer pretty easily. To do this, what we're going to do is I'm doing this for all my apps, but because I'm in one environment, I am, and I have one app that I'm really using this for, I'm fine with this. If we wanted to create it within specifically our app here, let's come into the YouTube demo and let's do this within here. So within your model driven app, whatever table you want to apply this to, you're gonna go ahead and click on the three dots next to it. For me, I'm gonna do contacts because that's how I have it set up, but this could be applied to whatever you want it to. Let's edit the command bar. I'm gonna edit mine in a new tab just because I'm very tab heavy. All right, we're gonna go into the main form. Hit edit. Now, you can see up at the top here in the formula bar that it says create a component library to enable PowerFX. Now, I'm not gonna be using a component library because I don't need it for this purpose. However, you can create modern commands with PowerFX. However, we're gonna do a little bit different. I'm gonna create a new command. We're gonna use JavaScript and I'm gonna call this begin timer. Here's actually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these ones. Now you might be saying, hey, isn't that a huge problem for what you're trying to do? Not really. The timer is running. The timer is stored on my computer right now. So it doesn't really matter if I delete these buttons. As long as I bring in the Mac, that's pretty fine. Begin timer. And I can give it a little icon if I want. Let me call this. All right, let's use, let's just see what we have here. And you're free to choose whichever one you find the best. Let's do, sorry, 
add or plus. Let's just do this one. That's fine. Accept. All right. Now we're going to run JavaScript and I'm looking for the library that I created here. So this is a library that is already added to our this command bar. But if I wanted to specifically add a library in, I would add a web resource. And then I have my library here. Once it appears here, you can just select it and hit add. Now I'm not going to because I already have it and I don't want to have two of the same one. But from here, you would select your library and then you would enter the function name. So this one is going to be timer.start timer. Okay. In start timer, all of this isn't going to apply to you. Some of the stuff is just specifically for what I'm doing for this use case. But here is start timer. Collapse all of that stuff. What start timer will do is it'll say, hey, go into the storage of this computer on this browser and find me something called p do timer storage. All right. If it doesn't exist, here's a default schema. That's what's here on line 24. And then it's going to go through and get the current time and then the record ID. Now, if it already has a timer that exists, which is what this check for timer is going to do, basically it's going to say, give me the ID of what you're passing in and I'll let you know if there's a timer that's there. If it does exist, so if it's true, hey, a timer has already been started for this record, you clicking the button's not really going to make a difference. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and create a timer, set the current state and load it into storage and let you know that the timer has been started. That's all this is gonna do. But one thing you will notice is on that, you have this primary control parameter. The primary control is the same thing as passing in the execution context or very similar. So the primary control in our instance is going to be the form. So we need to add that parameter of primary control. There's a bunch of other ones on here. If you guys want, I could try to have a time where I go through all of them and tell you what the difference between them are and how we can use them. But for right now, just select primary control. That's great. All I have to do from here, now that this is set, is hit save and publish. That's it. I don't have to do anything further. Well, I do have to wait for it to save and publish, but you know, how's your day big going? Mine's, mine's pretty okay. Oh good, it's done. All right, now that I have this, what I can do is, will this open? It will open, ta-da. Open up my DevTools panel. And what I can do is right click, empty cache and hard reload. Might take a couple of tries. Come on. We're waiting for our new button to come in. So it should appear right between save and save and close. If you want, you can move it. So my previous ones are next to here, like mark complete or by refresh. You can move it, that's totally fine. It makes no difference. And now it's the waiting game. So now if I just make sure it's all loaded in, I have the refresh here and my begin timer has shown up. All right, if I click it again, it says, hey, the time has already been started for this record. What are you doing? Stop it. So here's what I can do. Now that I have a way to start my timer, I now need a way to stop my timer. Now, if I refresh this, here's where you can see that this timer has been running for 11 minutes. I haven't been on this tab. I have been on all the other tabs, as you have seen, where I'm doing other things, but this timer is still running. In fact, I could even close this tab and reopen it and that timer is still going to run because it does not matter how long you want the timer to run or if you turn the computer off and back on again, the timer is going to keep running until we tell it to stop. So let's give it that ability. We're going to add a new command here. Okay. And in fact, we could actually, yep, at the top here, hit duplicate and just make it start all over. So if I have it as stop timer this time and I change my little icon to... Let's do a close. Let's see if that's perfect. Ah, close date, perfect. And for my function, if I change it here from start timer to end timer, I have to change nothing else about this. So if I hit save and publish here, and it's saving and publishing. Now we play the fun waiting game. And because I closed it to show you, I had to reopen that. Notice how I'm emptying the cache, but the timer doesn't stop. If you were to try to implement a form-based timer where it was directly within the form, it would stop. It would continuously cancel itself out because there's no way to track how long it's been running. Now that we have our stop timer here, if I hit stop timer, here's what's going to happen pretty immediately. All right, we can see here's my start time, here's my stop time, and here is the total elapsed time. Now, if I refresh this, this is the next portion of it. Or if I wanted to show what the total elapsed time in minutes was, I would want to have this field take the total amount of time from this subgrid or whatever these records are and pass it into here. How do we do that? Within the script, if you were to add an extra portion of this, and I do have this set up. So here's this giant chunk where I'm saying, hey, get me all of the records with a contact, which is my column, that's related to this record ID. Then do a bunch of math to say, hey, 
how long has the entirety of this been running? What it'll do is it'll then get me my information, tell me how long everything's been going on, and then populate it here. Now, I'm going to begin my timer again. I'm going to, within this form, I have a field here called total elapsed in minutes. This is the field that I'm going to use to populate that information. I'm going to hit save and publish here. If I empty cache and hard reload. All right, so what I did was I accidentally hit the begin timer and end timer button just to make sure that they were working as intended and it automatically filled in my total elapsed time for me. So I'm going to just go through, talk a little bit about what we have here for this timer. What you will be getting is going to be a truncated version of this simply because I don't wanna have a bunch of extra fields that you might not fill in. But what this does, essentially you have four functions, start, stop, check, and create. That's all this is doing. Now, here is my onloaded. You might be seeing those notifications at the top of the form, aside from the welcome to application, that's telling you like, hey, a timer has been started for this record. That's just some simple loaded logic that I have here, which you can copy from this if you would like. And that's just gonna tell me, you know, a timer has already been started in this instance. So now if I refresh this, minute has passed. My total is 14 minutes which is correct because we haven't gone over yet. And if I hit stop timer, I'm up to 16 minutes. Now what this is going to do, you might be saying, hey, Ace, you have 14 minutes and a bunch of extra seconds. Okay, yes, you're correct in that instance. What's happening here is I have about 16 minutes and a handful of seconds. So I had mine round down to the minute because if, if the minute is what matters after a minute has elapsed, that's what you care about. That's what we want to count. If I were to change this math, so that way if it was at, at all over a second to round it up to the next minute, that is logic we could implement. Like if I begin the timer and let's see, 25 plus 14 is going to be 39, 15, stop timer. So I waited 32 seconds, which I was a little bit off, but you can see here that it is counting up the number of seconds. That was 32 seconds, not a minute. So what it's going to do, it's going to take the total number of seconds divide them down and tell you what you currently have. And you can see up there at the top, your current total is 17 minutes and 25 seconds. That's how long you have until, or that's your current total. If you have any ideas of things like this, where it seems like it should be really simple, it should be really simple to just have a timer that's already built into the app, that you can start and stop. Let me know what kind of things you would like to see because I love a challenge. So I do have a challenge for you guys in turn if you would like it. Create a pause and cancel function for this timer. There is a way to pause and cancel these timers. You absolutely can do it. I have a script that does do that. However, I wanna see what you guys can come up with. So if you are interested in kind of learning about how I built this timer and what kind of language I'm using, there is an introduction to JavaScript course. If you are interested in having me do some work for this kind of stuff, you wanna get on a bit of one-on-one -on -one time with me so I can help you build this kind of stuff, this is where our virtual mentoring comes perfectly in handy. If you want to get in touch with us, just check our links out in the description and I will see you guys on the next Load of Pro. Bye.